tiny but mighty. This is footage recorded with VFO's VS1 dash camera. Is it the perfect discreet car DVR for $100? Or we're going to discover some disturbing issues about the design? One way to find out. Let's inspect. Hey, welcome to the channel. Great to meet you. I'm the Tech Mishka, and today we're going to talk about dash cameras with this tiny but it's really very compact considering the usual size of a dash camera. It comes from Viofo, a company I very often review here on the channel because they still continue to offer great value products and are among the very few companies who actually listen to their community because you can see them present in various forums, in uh, Reddit threads, um, you can see them even commenting on YouTube videos and uh, this is their first model for 2024. Very tiny, very discreet, no display over here, so covering the basics plus an image sensor which is famous for excellent performance in low light scenarios. So my task today is to show you everything meaningful about the VFO VS1 and you can expect the unboxing, the initial setup, the installation, a lot of samples and everything so that we can discover the good and the bad sides. Starting with something positive, which is the price point, just above $100, which is very similar to VFO's Mini series. But this here is a true Mini. It's gonna compete against devices from 70MI, FineView, Garmin or whichever brand you believe is meaningful at this budget point, with supposedly better hardware on VFO's side. Therefore, we are already unboxing in order to discover the competitive advantages, if any. Looks like the pack has also a new style. Maybe 2024 is a new beginning for VFO after all. Some of the top highlights are to be seen. Inside is the dash camera, much smaller than expected. Apparently VFO ditched the wedge-shaped form factor for this vertical camera. It is so tiny that it could be a good fit behind the rear view mirror if no other sensors are present in your vehicle. There's a detailed user guide, screen folios for installation, the necessary cables, even a dual port adapter, something often disregarded by most of us but really important because lets you power feed the dash camera and charge your smartphone simultaneously for instance. Since this dash cam's exterior is quite easy to explore, there's a well-working angle adjustment mechanism, a micro SD card slot, two function buttons, two LEDs indicating the status, and of course the lens area at the front. More interesting are the tech pieces on the inside. Besides the 5 megapixel Sony Starvis 2 image sensor, there's a capable chipset, 7 element optics with f by 1.8 aperture, 140 degree field of view, G sensor and motion detection, inbuilt GPS, micro SD card support for up to 512 gigabytes, a dual band Wi Fi implementation, and of course, a smartphone app. The really big strength of this dash camera is indeed the size, because it's just a fraction of the size of similarly specced dash cameras. And although there is no display on the back, you still get enough information thanks to these LEDs. And there also are two function buttons for pretty much most of the things that you need to control for proper operation. And they are configurable. You can enable or disable the Wi-Fi function. You can uh, also mark a video as a read only. You can enable or disable the microphone and so on and so forth. If that's not enough, you can use the voice commands such as Turn off Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi disabled. And everything else can also be configured through the smartphone app. Apparently, everything about this dash camera is similar to last year's mini version at a significantly smaller scale. If you search for something to criticize, I would say the front lens compartment, which right now doesn't seem to have a CPL filter accessory, which is going to annoy some people. I think based on the footage we can conclude that actually the footage is pretty good even without such. And I've seen some rumors that probably the next batches are going to get a CPL filter embedded. Not confirmed by VFO though. And maybe sometime in the future they might develop some sort of housing which is going to make compatible installation of CPL filters. Well, I really want to show you more footage, but first let's quickly go through the installation and the setup. Since we talk about a front camera only, installation is rather easy and quick. Get your screen folio. It is much better to have such one instead of placing the adhesive on the glass directly because removal is much easier. Then adjust the camera. Perhaps it's a good idea to explore the option to install it behind the rear view mirror because of the compact size. Also, think about the reach of the wipers because you want the footage to be good 
even if it's raining outside. After finding the right spot and making sure the adhesive is tight enough, take care of the cable. If parking mode is desired, then get yourself the so-called hardwire kit. It provides constant power from the car's battery and, as you can see, has voltage drop protection levels, which will terminate the power input should the car's battery get exhausted. In terms of power consumption, here is some statistical data for you. Now, for most of the video files, I've kept the defaults as high resolution as possible for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The highest possible bitrate, HDR, is on, so we enjoy videos that are as good as the current firmware version of the VS1 can record them. Could be that in time the offer further tuned the image quality, but don't expect any significant difference. In terms of details, this is pretty good. In daytime, maybe the lack of greater pixel density is a bit of a drawback, because in 4K resolution somewhat more details might have been present. Still, the footage looks pretty good, sharp, not too distorted at the edges, good contrast levels, very good dynamic range, colors are leaning towards magenta. What matters the most is that a lot of details, including car plates, of course, are well visible. The mentioned inability to record in 4K is apparently good news for the low light footage. It is good, very good. Well, not as good as the offer's top end solutions, but quality is in place and you can distinguish a great amount of details. I guess seeing these samples is a relief in case you have concerns about the lack of a CPL filter. Good news is that even if you zoom in twice digitally, and I do this in post-production, it's not a camera feature, the image doesn't seem to fall apart and retains good amounts of details. As usual, it's a good idea to compare against a benchmark. Blackview's DR970X is one of the best 2023 dash cams, and here you can decide for yourself which is the better video, the one on the left or the one on the right side would be nice of you to actually say something about your reasons in the comments area below. Here's an audio test with its new VFO dash camera driving with about 85 km per hour. That's pretty strong wind. You can let me know in the comments below how does this internal microphone feel. Since there's no display, most of the config happens via the smartphone app. It's the well-known VFO app. Some people believe the interface is too outdated, but I feel it's just fine and the amount of configuration features is also a spot on. Video resolution, exposure settings, HDR and a lot more. This is what you can adjust from here. As mentioned earlier, only two hardware buttons on the dashcam itself are available to mute and unmute the microphone as well as to quickly mark a video as read only. You can press and hold to format the SD card as well. To make sure we've covered everything about VS1, we should talk about problems, I guess. Well, I had none of them, but there certainly are features that I'd love to see improved or implemented, like a rear camera option, the mentioned CPL filter, the front lens can easily get dirt by your fingers while adjusted, and maybe I wish to see a 4K capable Pro version someday. That would be great. Obviously, referring back to the question from the start whether there is something disturbing about it, I would say not at all. Quite the opposite. Very compact, very capable, very reliable, supporting voice commands and apparently offering exceptionally good image quality. And that's obviously thanks to the pretty capable image sensor inside. I think the OFO VS1 is a really strong contender and a very good new beginning of this new shape and style of VFO's dash cameras. I'm not really sure if any other models are going to get this revamped look and style, but if they do, that could be pretty exciting. Or not, maybe we can talk about this in the comment section below the video. Do you like the new vision of VFO? And do you think they're departing from the old wedge-shaped dash cameras? And what do you think about the S1? The comment section is below the video. As usual, underneath you're going to find some more information about how you can support my work here on the channel and possibly a link to buy the VS1 with a discount. Check the video description for more information. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope it was useful and if that's the case, you know what to do to support my work here. I wish you a fantastic day, drive safely and responsibly and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!